Hello and welcome to part 2 of my Necrofast jungling guide. In this video I'll show you how to farm the Dire Ancients. Ever since the 84 changelog it was pretty obvious that Necro Ancients was gonna be a thing, so maybe you've already seen one of the many videos out there with Necro Ancients, most of them involving a fast Midas and some pop stumping action. But what I wanna show you is how this could work in even a high level game. In part 1 of my Necrofast jungling guide I showed you how to farm the normal diet jungle efficiently and this is a lot faster than doing ancients to be honest. So like I said in part 1, I think this ancient strategy should be considered to be a kind of backup in case your own diet jungle gets invaded or watered off completely. Since I'm working with the idea to do this in a real game, I'm not gonna take any of the runes. I'm just gonna deny all of them. So if you're wondering why I never pick up the bounty runes in my jungle guide as a cheap way to get extra gold and better level timings, then this is why. You can never expect to get the runes in a real game. If the enemy doesn't get the rune, then your own mid player should get it. It'll be hard to shut down both the Dire Jungle and the Dire Ancients. So if the enemy team really hunts you down in one of these places, you can just retreat to the other. The general idea is that you stack the Ancients every minute at 53 and then let the Heartstop Aura do its magic, because yes, ever since the 84 patch, Heartstop Aura now works on the Ancients. Potentially you could just stand right next to the Ancients waiting for the Heartstop Aura to do its work, but I think that's a bad idea. I think it's a lot better to drag the creeps back and forth and get as many right clicks in as possible. This way, first of all, will get you the early XP faster, obviously, since you're killing off the creeps faster. And secondly, it also means that your general position is up here closer to your mid tier 2 tower, so if the enemy comes to gank you, they will have to walk through a wall of instincts here, which could hurt them. And thirdly, you don't leave up a huge stack of creeps with low HP, which potentially could get stolen. I'm choosing to start off with a quilling blade for two reasons. First of all, I'm flirting with the idea that if you start out in the normal diet jungle, you'll be needing the quilling blade to cut out a bunch of trees. And then if you realize that the enemy team is constantly ganking you or they're warding off all your camps, then you can retreat to the incense area instead. And secondly, the quilling blade is an easy way to cut down these four trees here, which means you'll get a full view of the ancients as well as the pathway where you could get ganked from. You don't have to invest in a quilling blade to do ancients on Dire. You can have an ally hero to cut down the trees or you could just not cut down the trees at all. But the reason I really want these trees to be cut down is because I want to go for the magic stick. This is really powerful because, as you can see, this allows you to get free magic stick charges, which could come in very handy in case of ganks. So this also means that you should be careful not to attack the big thunder lizards. You want to keep it alive as long as possible so you can get as many stick charges out of it as possible. Skill points. I think two levels in Heartstop Aura is all you need. I don't think you need any levels in Sadist, because if you're careful not to tank any damage from the Ancients, then you won't take any damage, so you won't need the Sadist to keep up your HP. So instead max out your Death Pulse, because you want that burst heal so you can survive the gank and possibly turn it around. I did say that you can never expect to get the runes in a real game, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to contest the runes. If you have Necrophos doing Ancients, then you should have your mid lane, your off lane and maybe even your support hero to come into the bottom rune so you have 4 players ready to defend this area. So as a team you should value the bottom rune more so than the top rune because you want to keep control over this area where Necrophos is farming. But be careful, if your team is not in position to defend the bottom rune, you could get killed trying to get the rune and that is not what you want. As for the items, I think you should absolutely not go for a Midas. Running a jungling necrophas is greedy, running Midas on top of that is just too greedy, and getting a Midas before your boots of speed here on the Ancients area is absolutely way too greedy. What you need is items that can help you survive the incoming gank, which is coming sooner or later. So what you need is a magic stick and boots as soon as possible. Then you should complete the strength traits and of course upgrade the magic stick to a magic wand the second you need more charges. Since you don't really need any items to speed up your jungling on the Ancients, I suggest you buy the courier, the wards, as well as the upgraded courier. If you get the Thunderhide camp early on, you should get an early magic stick. And if you don't get the Thunderhide camp early, then you should just get your boots of speed first and then upgrade the courier at 3 minutes and then get a magic stick. Chances are you will have a Thunderhide camp at this point and even if you shouldn't get it, then it's actually fine because the Thunderhide camp gives you less XP than the other creeps, so no matter which type of neutral you get in the Ancients, you're actually fine with it. Also, keep in mind you have gold to spare in the beginning in case you need a sentry ward. So let's imagine a scenario where you're trying to farm the ancients and the enemy support realize what you're doing so they smoke up and trying to gank you. Like I said before, you should try whenever possible to position yourself up here as far back as possible. So the enemy support duo who is trying to gank you can come from two directions. If they come in from this side by the rune, they will walk into this big wall of ancients which might present a slight problem for them. And if they come in from this side, from the bottom lane, then there's a good chance that your off lane will break the smoke. 
but let's say the two support smokes and ganks you around the time you hit level 6. You build up as much survivability as possible, so with the strength traits you got 891 HP, then you have your magic wand charges which is 255 HP, and let's say you get two heals off while they're trying to gank you which is another 220 HP. This adds up to 1366 HP before calculating the armor. So how are you actually gonna kill this guy? Which heroes can actually do 1200 damage with burst abilities this early in the game? And while they are trying to kill off your Necroforce, you can bring it back up from all sides. Your mid can come in from this side, your offlane can come in from this side, and your support hero can even TP into one of the tier 2 towers, so all of a sudden you are in position where you are 4 against 2. So this is why I think the Dire Ancients are safer to farm than the Radiant Ancients. You are somewhat more protected on the Dire side in the sense that it is easier for your allies to come in to trap the enemy support by cutting off their escape routes. So there is a decent chance you can turn the gank and pick up some kills on the enemy support heroes before they manage to kill off your Necrophos. If your Necrophos got nothing but Gloves of Haste at this point because he wants to go for this super fast Midas, then he won't have the movement speed nor the HP to survive long enough for help to arrive. Let's compare the Dire Jungle with the Dire Ancients. No matter if you farm the Ancients or if you use my high ground technique to farm the normal Dire Jungle, then you will have your level 6 at around 6 minutes. But that is kind of an unfair comparison, because when I hit level 6 in the normal jungle, I also got this huge hard camp stack which is worth 1 or 2 levels of XP. So in the normal jungle you can get your level 9 at 9 minutes, and you can get nowhere near that by doing Ancients. So it is a lot faster to farm the normal jungle. And also, let's not forget that you only have one camp to work with when you are doing Ancients, meaning that if the enemy team keeps warding it off or keep blocking it with Lycan wolves or something, then you're not gonna accomplish much by farming ancients. So if you fail to keep control over the ancients area here, you can just go back to the normal die jungle and try to farm up there. However, there are also a few upsides by farming the ancients. You don't need any items to speed up your jungling, which means you are free to get the courier and the wards and the flying courier as I did in this replay here. This frees up the other support so he can get his level 1 boots if he wants it. Also, you could make the argument that it is slightly safer to farm the ancients because it's gonna be hard to gank you with the trits and the magic stick and the fact that you have the high ground area here so you can see them coming. And finally, it is a lot easier to do ancients than it is to pull off the high ground jungling like I showed you in part 1. If you're just gonna stack the ancients every minute and stay afk the rest of the time, then obviously it's gonna be really easy to do. If you do it like me and drag the creeps back and forth all the time, then it's gonna be a little more difficult, but still pretty easy. The only thing you need to think about is not to tank any damage from the ancients. So on a scale from 1 to 10, I would give this a 4. So if you see from a technical point of view, it is a lot easier to farm the ancients compared to the normal jungle where the difficulty is 8. In a serious high level game though, doing ancients is generally pretty risky. You only have one camp to work with, so if the enemy is smart they will realize what you are doing and they will try to ward off the ancients or they will try to gank you. But this is why I think the ancient jungling should be a backup plan for you in case the normal jungling is not working out. And with the magic stick and the strength traits and the fact that you can choose whether you want to farm the ancients or the normal diet jungle, then I think you might actually get away with this. So if you are ever under any circumstances going to do ancients in a high level game, then you should do it with Necrophos and you should do it here on the dire side. In the other parts I'll show you how to get level 9 at 9 minutes by farming the dire jungle, I'll show you how to do the high ground jungle on the radiant side, and also I'll show you how to get a ridiculous 4 minute Midas on the radiant ancients. So if you want to check out my other parts, you can click here on the left. And if you like what I'm doing, then please click here to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon for part 3 of my Necrophos jungling guide.